Hey, it's me, Richie T, and it's time to get real. Let's get real, and I've got my friend Jordan Allen here. Uh, now, I got a question for you. Mm -hmm. I'm supposed to uh, ask you about you and Kid Cudi. Me and Kid Cudi. Yeah, you're. You look like Kid Cudi. You are Kid Cudi on the side. Um, I'm not Kid Cudi on the side. Yeah. Uh, I listen to his music a little bit, but I wouldn't say. He's like the go-to guy to ask me about. Okay. I'm more of a J. Cole type of guy. Okay. Yeah. All right. All right. Respect then. Yeah. I'll back it off a little bit. <laughs> no Kid Cudi. Uh, grew up in Rochester, New York, yes, right? Yes, sir. Uh, tell, tell me what that's like. Um, it's actually I've been. It's funny. It's kind of not that different from here. Um, there's the only big difference I think is the mountains. Uh, pretty flat in Rochester. Yeah, it's pretty pretty flat. Um, it's, people are a little bit different maybe, but in terms of just like if I were to go outside and look around and like look at the environment, it's kind of similar uh, to where I'm back home. So I kind of made the adjustment of moving out here uh, not too hard, which has been nice. Uh, I was reading some stuff. Uh, it says you recently got your first apartment. Is yeah, that right? That is true. Uh, how's that? Uh, getting my own apartment was kind of a weird feeling. I lived away from home from when I was 15. I moved down uh, down to residency with the national team in Florida, mm -hmm. and then up to the academy for RSL in Arizona. So I lived away by myself before, but I never really had my own spot. I was still kind of, uh, I had restrictions. I was living with other kids, um, with other adults that were like kind of set the boundaries for me. But now that I have my own spot, it's a little bit different. Kind of enjoy it though. Nice Is it crazy? You testing, you testing your limits a little bit? Like, yeah. ah, I probably shouldn't have done that. Uh, I've been pretty, uh, pretty smart about what I've been doing so far. I haven't tried anything too crazy, but I'm sure the more comfortable I get down here, the more I'll kind of look to explore a little bit down here in Salt Lake. Uh, that seems crazy to me that you moved out at 15. I know yeah. that, I mean, you're playing professional soccer for crying out loud, yeah. so, I mean. It worked out, have, I guess. Yeah, you, have to, you have to be pretty responsible, and yeah, it worked yeah. out for you. Yeah. But was that pretty scary? Uh, no, I think for me it was exciting, because I was always looking, even when I was like 12, 13, I was looking at programs to, live somewhere residential and play soccer. So when I did get the opportunity to move down, especially with it being the national team, it's something you're more excited about than kind of scared about. So I was lucky with that. When you, you talk about going uh, and living residential and playing, mm -hmm. is it just everyone is there and you're just living and playing soccer all the time? Yeah, that's at home you get, always have like those one or two friends if you want to ask them to go kick the ball around. Yeah, they'll go play maybe like once a week. But when you're at a residential spot, you have kids that they all love the game. Uh, they all have the same type of goals. So when I was able to go to those spot, uh, those places, um, not only were the practices good, but the time off, we always had a bunch of guys that wanted to go do extra stuff. And I think that's important uh, to develop. Did you ever get bored of talking about soccer though? Like sometimes it's just like, can any, will anyone talk to me about yeah. something else besides soccer? I mean, we probably had the same conversations that would recycle every three days, but I guess when you love the game that much, you don't really notice it as a negative thing. You kind of embrace it. And that was uh, in where, what, which city is the residential? The residential is in Bradenton um, at the IMG, oh, cool. uh, Bradenton, Florida at the IMG facilities. So uh, did you notice a huge difference from coming from New York to Florida? Because you said... Utah's yeah. like New York. But. Utah's not that different from, not New York City from Rochester. Mm -hmm. um, Florida was probably a little bit different just because it's a completely different climate and um, the people are maybe a little bit different, but I wouldn't say it was too hard of an adjustment. Do you get razzed by the guys on the team for being so young? Um, you can say so, I won't tell them. <laughs> no, they, they just like this. the <laughs> typical stuff, nothing out of the ordinary. Uh, you just got to embrace it and enjoy it. I can't complain about anything. The guys have been great to me, so uh, it's awesome being able to be around guys that have been here, especially with the type of guys we have, with the core group that have been here for a while. Uh, I can always get advice from them, so I can't have any complaints about what they Do they have nicknames for you, though? Uh, not really. Um, oh, come on, a skip or a tiger or Nothing, a nothing like that. I just go by, uh, Borges calls me J Triple L because my Twitter name is J Allen with three L's because the two L's was taken. Oh, really? Yeah, so that's really the only thing I get, get is J Triple L. Is it taken by someone who like doesn't tweet and every time you go to Twitter you're actually, like, that jerk needs to... Yeah, actually I need to talk about somebody at RSL because they have my thing on the web, the RSL webpage is J with the two L's. So they're so, leaving it to somebody else? Yeah, my uncle t called me and was like, hey, uh, I think I think they uh, mixed up your Twitter name on the webpage because some old guy uh, was was the person on Twitter when I clicked on it. And I was like, oh, I'm sorry, I didn't they're know. Just, they're just taking advantage of it. They're like, yeah, I'm looking forward to playing yeah. this Saturday. He's probably getting a bunch of notifications, probably more than me. Yeah. Uh, do you like doing that? Do you think that that's smart for uh, athletes to be able to tweet? Uh, yeah, I think it's awesome. Um, 
because I, I follow all, I'm a big Arsenal fan. I follow all the people on Arsenal, all the players. Um, but that's not really a big thing. The culture is a little bit different in Europe, so those guys don't really tweet or interact with their players as much. Um, I've Before I even signed with the team, I was already interacting with fans from ourself and when I would come up here with the um, reserves and people would talk to me and I talk to them I think it's a great way to connect with the fans and I enjoy it what's the best thing for you about Utah the best thing for me about Utah I would have to say the scenery because like I said with Rochester that's the one difference is we don't really have those nice views I mean from my apartment I can look out and see the mountains and I think that's awesome uh, talking to a bunch of the guys, uh, as I've had the opportunity to, they've talked about how they love being able to go out and explore, mm -hmm. do hiking and stuff like that. Do you? Is it like group hikes that everyone goes on, or does everyone enjoy it themselves? Um, I think a lot of guys go out together, usually like three or four. I haven't gone out yet. Um, I was planning on it, but I had my ankle uh, issue for the last few weeks, so that's something I'm going to try to explore with um, more towards the summer and when I bring my friends out. Let's talk about the ankle. Yeah. How, how's it going? Uh, it's better. I trained last week. Um, didn't really feel 100% confident to go um, and play this weekend. Um, but I'm heading out tomorrow with the U.S. under 20s. Um, so I'm healthy enough to go and play. So I'm looking forward to getting back into it. How do you judge that stuff? Is it do they leave it strictly to you? Or, yeah, um, I'm sure you have to meet with a doctor and they look at it and go, no, this is a fracture or something like that. Yeah. But otherwise, they leave it to you. Yeah, I mean, I went in the day after it happened to the doctor's office just to get an X-ray and get it all checked out, and then from there, just about strengthening it. Um, my ankle's strong, so the only thing I'm really really dealing with is just like the niggling pain that I'll get from time to time. Um, but otherwise, it's not too bad. It's something I can play with for now. I would think that would be the scariest thing about what you do mm -hmm. is, you know, you run and it, it could be that you were stepping off your curb to go get the mail and yeah. you pop something and go, oh, uh, okay, mm -hmm. I'm good. You, you kind of do that check-in thing. Yeah. Uh, does it make you anxious about that or do you just? Um, I think that's one of the biggest differences I've noticed about myself since I signed uh, professional is before um, I might like get a little injury and I'd think, oh, I'll just work hard and get back to it. Now you get an injury and you're thinking, oh. Like this is my career, I can't be missing all this time, or even just like you take a step and you like slip a little bit and you're like, oh, that's a good thing I didn't hurt myself because yeah. this is my job. So um, that's one thing I've noticed that's, I think, different in my head um, about. But it's something that it comes with the sport. That's what you have to mentally prepare yourself for. Uh, your family, they're pretty supportive of you moving out at 15 and doing this whole thing? Uh, yeah, they were great about it. Um, uh, they never held me back from moving away. Uh, they supported me. Um, I had the opportunity to sign with RSL last year, um, but they pushed. The one, this is the one time that they did kind of hold me back a little bit. Um, they pushed me to go to Virginia first semester just so I could get in there, get the scholarship, and come back um, without having to worry about paying for it. So once I did that, they were all for me signing here, and they were very comfortable with me coming out. Which they, awesome. they just want you to make sure you're taking care of yeah. yourself for the future. Yeah, you never know. It was a great decision. Stuff. Yeah, I'm, I don't regret it at all. I loved it out there. Uh, what do you want to do? I mean, obviously yeah. you're going to play soccer for as long as you can, yeah. but then where do you see yourself doing? I really have no idea. They asked me actually um, for the interviews for the Jumbotron during the games. The first question they asked me was, if you weren't playing soccer, what would you be doing? And I like sat there for like a minute and I was like, I don't know, you're going to have to ask me another question because <laughs> I don't have anything, I don't you're have an like, answer from that. the time I was born, yeah. literally inside my mother's womb, I was kicking, ready to go. Yeah. Let's, you know. I mean, I still got my uh, first soccer shoes back in my house, so I've always been driven towards playing soccer since I was a baby. Uh, what did mom and dad do? Did they um, play sports or anything like that? My dad actually is from Jamaica. He came over, um, he had a bunch of friends that had come over for soccer at a little school from in Rochester called Roberts Wesleyan. Mm -hmm. um, so he came over, played soccer there for four years, uh, played about a year and a half with the USL team over there, Rochester Rhinos, and then got into, uh, he works for uh, can, a bank out there, um, worked for J.P. Morgan Chase for about 19 years, I think. So. Cool. So yeah. did he kind of drive you because it was all sort of his dream? Was it that kind of thing? Oh, uh, no. He, after he was done playing with the Rhinos and went into having an actual job, he continued coaching. He uh, coached the local club where I'm from. Um, when he first started, it was the Junior Rhinos. So I would always go on the road trips with them, and I was always around the game. Uh, so that kind of molded me into the type of person, player that I am now. That's cool. One yeah. last question, then I'll let you go. What's something that we don't know about you? Uh, something that you don't know about me. Can be big. Can be one of those things that we go. There's no way that that's true, or it could just be something like, eh, you didn't know this. Oh man, something that 
kind of an open book with my Twitter. I think if you went are, through. Are you dating somebody? I am dating somebody. Um, there we go. I've been with my girlfriend, Allie, for a little over two years now. Good work. Yeah, she was out here actually for um, her spring break a couple weeks ago. So So she's still doing the school and college? She, yeah, thing? she's still, she's a freshman too, so she's still got a little ways ahead of her. Is that hard? Uh, yeah, it's kind of hard, but I mean, we've been doing it for a while, so it's not too difficult. We get through it. That's cool. You yep. just broke a lot of ladies' hearts, though. I know. I'm sure I did. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for taking a couple I appreciate minutes. you guys having me. Thank you. You bet.